five keys for the Dolphins to beat the Falcons in Week 7. With the 2-3 Atlanta Falcons coming to town, the 1-5 Miami Dolphins have an opportunity to earn their second victory of the season in Week 7. Brian Flores' team has struggled early in 2021, and this is the time when negativity starts to set in. They've done a great job of ignoring the outside noise and gloom that's surrounding them, and that will be something that they will need to continue as long as they are battling. Atlanta, however, isn't an opponent that can be overlooked. They have some really talented players and a new coach who is hungry to prove that he belongs in this league. Here are five keys for the Dolphins to secure a win against the Falcons. Limit the role of Kyle Pitts and Calvin Ridley. The explosive nature of the Falcons' offense would come from the rookie tight end and stud wideout. Neither player has broken out to be a superstar just yet, but they both have the potential to do so. It would make sense that the Dolphins would put their two best coverage guys on them, Xavier Howard and Byron Jones. However, both cornerbacks are dealing with injuries right now that kept them out of the Week 6 game against Jacksonville. They could use Javon Holland on Pitts as well, but with Pitts' athleticism, he could have Holland chasing all day. Stop their secret weapon, Cordero Patterson has had an amazing start to the year with Atlanta. Through five games, the versatile weapon has totaled 173 yards and one touchdown on the ground while adding 25 receptions for 295 yards and four touchdowns in the passing game. The former first-round pick has always been solid on special teams, as he's tied for the NFL record for most career kick return touchdowns, but this year he's on pace for his best offensive season yet. Miami can't forget about Patterson like other teams have this year. Continue to use the two best offensive weapons. Last week, the Dolphins' offense relied heavily on Mike Jasicki and Jalen Waddell. While it didn't result in a victory, they were extremely productive with 18 receptions for 185 yards and two touchdowns coming from just them. Tua Tungavailoa seemed to be comfortable throwing to these guys and letting them do what they can after securing the catch. We'll just have to hope Jasicki doesn't attempt another ludicrous hurdle. Call better plays. It's plain and simple. The Dolphins lost their Week 6 game against the Jaguars because of their play calling. Whether it was their last offensive play of the game or the numerous questionable calls earlier, everyone was upset with George Godsey after the loss. It's pretty common knowledge that they've struggled to run the ball, but there needs to be an attempt at least. If they can run, it will make passing that much easier. They have to be better. Get some push on the line. Watching last week's game, it's evident that the offensive line wasn't as good as allowing no sacks would suggest. Tunga Vailoa was constantly pressured, and, while he adjusted well, you can't expect him to be able to do that all of the time. The line is also part of the reason that the Dolphins haven't committed to running the ball. If guys are getting hit behind the line or there aren't holes for backs to run through, the play is going to result in a small gain at best. Atlanta's defensive line shouldn't scare Miami, but, as we've seen, that doesn't mean anything. Miami Dolphins fans need to start believing the Deshaun Watson rumors. Deshaun Watson is not a member of the Miami Dolphins, yet, but the rumor that won't go away is once again rearing its ugly head and a move could come soon. So why should you embrace this latest round of rumors and speculation? This one feels different. It seems different and with the trade deadline only two weeks away, it makes perfect sense. Forget about those spouting over the last several months that a deal could come this week, this might actually be the week that happens. The latest round started with Houston beat writer John McLean of the Houston Chronicle. He said that the talks between the two teams have heated up and that a deal could come this week. McLean is one of the few local guys who have solid contacts and knowledge of the team. He is a legit source for information and isn't one who regularly throws garbage out the window. Another report emerged yesterday afternoon that Tua Tungavailoa is being mentioned in those circles indicating that if the Dolphins do trade for Watson, Tungavailoa won't be involved. The latest has the Broncos and the Washington football team having interest and that he could be traded before the deadline as well. There are plenty who believe this is all nothing but speculation and that there is no truth to the rumors but the Dolphins are not publicly denying it or talking about it. They avoid the topic and while Brian Flores and Chris Greer typically don't comment on these types of rumors, if there was nothing to them, they would have denied them. Consider that when Xavier Howard demanded a trade Brian Flores made it clear in his presser that they wanted Howard in Miami. He wouldn't discuss anything else about the situation only that it was something they were dealing with. When asked about Watson, Flores gives the old, Tua is our quarterback. That may sound like a denial but it is far from, we have our franchise quarterback, Tua Tungavailoa. 
we are not looking for another one. If Miami wasn't truly involved in those talks, that is what they would have said. Instead, Miami has been quiet and that can't bode well for Tua's confidence which has been put through ever media ringer since the day he started his first game. I'm not saying that a trade is imminent. I'm not sure what to actually believe right now but I am braced for the reality that this deal may actually get done and if it does, well we can debate that situation after the fact.